what you see there is a reconstruction from 1920. Your mines burned down several times completely in the last 600 years, so nothing original is left from that time. It's made of oak that burns as well. <coughs> So there were plenty of pictures to make a reconstruction was pretty easy in the end. A very, very good invention, by the way. 2,000 years ago, the Romans brought us together with the wine, those machines. It's a form of wine press, nothing else. Imagine, instead of the table, a bucket for the grapes, with a long hand, you turn a long screw that makes moving down a pressing plate to get the juice out of it. So who makes uses machines from here? And he said, well, what's useful for the mind can be useful for something else. The bucket came away, the table underneath. On the table, the moving sledge. The sledge is the place for what you want to print, the printing plate. Then he developed, we call it the mirror. You open it, in here comes the paper that should be printed. It's held by this frame, and once the plate is colored, you put the whole thing down to it, and with the sledge, you move it underneath the pressing plate. And with a strong pull on this handle, you make the screw turn, that makes the pressure, that makes the print. That's the way the printing machine was invented. Printing itself <coughs> is much, much older. It's not an invention of Gutenberg, Around 800 years before him, the Far East, especially China, developed a system of block printing, we call it, with blocks that were cut. Well, this is an example with old German play cards on it. Yeah, that was first of all a lot of work you had to do. Everything that should be printed had to be cut away, and this mirrored. So, and if you have made the smallest mistake, maybe near the end of such a project, you have a very expensive piece of burning wood lying on your table. You can't repair such a thing. You have to start from the beginning. Your, on here comes a special ink, the paper, and with a brush, you rub it. You tear the paper away, and you have a print from this. With this method, you print paper only from one side. To print the back side, you would have rubbed over the side that you just had printed, so you would have damaged it again. That you can print paper from both sides only works underneath the press. But on long terms, not with wood cut as a printing plate, this press already makes one ton of pressure, the wood will break away. So for good men it was clear this kind of printing needs a complete different solution. <coughs> and as he came from the metal sector, it was clear that it will be a matter. So my colleague put the stuff somewhere up there. He had developed himself in Strasbourg for making via a mold and matrix, pickle amulets we call it, a special alloy consisting of lead, antimony, bismuth, and tin. Pretty practical the stuff. It's liquid at 300 degrees Celsius. It hardens in one second, and the most important of this alloy, by cooling down, it doesn't shrink. Most metals do this. Keeps exactly measures and volumes. Without that, he never would have made characters from this. So that was his next great question: How do I get these well-filled cases with all the characters I need? On one page, we have up to 3,500. So for starting this project of printing, he needed first of all around 60,000 of them. So how to make them? You could buy them. They don't fall from the sky either. You have to produce them. That should be done in a pretty fast way. And what was the most important for him, they should be absolutely identical one to each other. Not like a handwriting where each A is always a little bit different. So he had a look here in minds of those who made money coins. Coins are made by stencils. Same way Gutenberg took for creating his characters, the money makers made him first of all from each sign he needed such a steel stencil. This is one with a big G on it. This stencil he took engraved his character with a strong hammer stroke 
in a soft piece of metal. Now the G is engraved in this piece of copper here. And that was his form, his matrix, for making any number of absolutely equal characters. To do that in the way that he got the real characters from it, he made his most important invention. <coughs> Excuse me, these are my first words today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A little machine. We call it the hand bowl. By the way, first machine in mankind's history that could make serial work. Two movable parts in metal that give place in the middle to a little channel, movable for a very simple reason, to get between those two parts here and the size of matrix. I will show you how this works. This G, I put it on this opening, I fix the two parts with this spring, now it holds in there, and from the back side I have the channel exactly opened in the size that I need for making a mold of this character. As you have the metal liquid there, you can stand here or at this door. I can show you how this was done. <coughs> so, and as it is three times water than boiling water, I prefer gloves. In one hand, I take the hand mold with the opening on top. With the spoon, I get the liquid metal out of this little oven we have here and pour it up there into the top of the hand mold. So as soon as I've done it, it's already hard. I can open the hand mold and out it comes. One character. Wow. Yeah, now you have the G on there. The character is cut there. They need the same height to be put together to a line. It's filed from all sides. And a little gravier came in there, the singer to show you later what it's good for. Hmm. Gutenberg could produce with this little machine around 50 characters per minute. One exact like the other. <coughs> he had a few of those. So the way for the welfare cases is needed was free. Yeah, and now complete new professions came up. Take place there again. <coughs> you have to make a readable text from all the characters you have there. <coughs> the profession of the compositor. The compositor always starts with the compositor's angle, we call it. Made from wood in that time, fixed on the size of the column that should be printed. In here came, depending on the size of the characters, to six or seven lines. At the bottom of the characters, you see such a gradient going through from the left to the right. This is the so-called cinchita. That was a very important thing at that time. They didn't have that good light we have today. <coughs> In winter, they had to work with candle lights. So here the compositor could touch along. If he felt this line going through, he knew my characters are the right way around at this angle. That was a great help. The lines from the angle, as the next step, were collected into the compositor ship, we call it. This is a wooden frame, open on top. Four of those blocks made the page that should be printed. Around each block came a little cord, first of all, to keep the characters together. A little rubbing was made, so it be correction. At this estate, it was still pretty easy to change raw characters for the right one. Everything was correct for that reason. The frame was open on top. The whole thing came onto the printing table, was fixed there, and ready for printing. So, next thing that Gutenberg had to develop was ink. That would work on woodcuts, didn't work under the press. <coughs> so, he made from linen oil, soot from chimneys, and resin from trees and ink. And with these famous ink boards, the ink came first on here and then onto the printing plate. Made from wood, filled with horse hair and covered preferably with dog leather. Yeah, dog leather for a very simple reason. Dogs don't sweat, they don't have paws. So the ink nicely stays outside 
doesn't soak on the inside. And it makes time, you had on each corner dead dogs, it was pretty cheap and easy to get the leather as well. There's a was very expensive thing at that time. Mm. Long time in use, by the way, nearly 400 years. Around 1820, from England, the roads came that we know today. Yeah, and this is still today the printer's guild sign. We don't use them anymore, we do it also with the rowers. And we do something that Gutenberg also did in the beginning, we make a three color print. Gutenberg stopped the color printing pretty soon, <clears throat> not for technical reasons. He said, it doesn't pay me, it's too expensive, it doesn't make me any profits, I have too much work with it. For each print, I have to get my printing made in pieces. We can do it easily. We use blocks, not single letters. For Gutenberg, it was an incredible work. We have to color everything separately and get it back together. So he said, no, I'm only going to print it black. I leave the space as white and open, where later on should be decoration and coloration. And that was up to the one who bought a Bible from him to take care of this. Gutenberg only printed. He did nothing else. Everything else was up to the market who bought us from him. He's a businessman. If everything, <coughs> if everything was printed, the client went to a so-called illuminator. That was the artist that colorated the books. Yeah, and depending on how much he wanted to invest, it was a little bit simple or very rich. Upstairs in the board, you see the difference very well. Our edition in the middle is decorated simply. The one on the right side, richly. Yeah, Gutenberg had borrowed himself a lot of money from a rich merchant here in Mainz. 1,600 gulden, that corresponds to one and a half billion euros. An incredible sum in that time. You also could have bought 10 of those nice houses in Mainz from the same money. He took a great risk. Therefore, his decision to stop the kind of printing because it doesn't make him any profits. So, I have colored everything, put everything back together. <coughs> now, printing can start. For printing, you need paper. Paper was at the time of Gutenberg pretty rare, also pretty expensive. <coughs> Paper, by the way, also a Chinese invention. We got the word from the Egyptians, papyrus. This is crosswise pressed plants, complete different material. Paper is made by Jews consisting of cotton and linen, preferably. Via drains, page by page. Around 100 after Christ, China developed this technique came via Arabia very late to Europe, around 800 in Spain, the first paper mills, and in the time of Gutenberg, 15th century, North Italy was the great European center for best quality paper. So Gutenberg got his paper from there. We are pretty lucky about it. You wouldn't be here if you wouldn't have done so. None of the Bibles would have survived all those centuries. That's really due to this very fine paper he got. So, the paper is in the mirror. Printing is hard work. You would be my printer mate, but thanks to Corona, we are not allowed to bring someone up here. So, it's up to me to do it. The mirror comes down onto the printing plate. With the slab, the whole thing comes underneath the pressing plate. And with a strong pull on this handle, I got a print. One, two, and three. Yeah, that's the way printing worked for 400 years, page by page, imagine that. And they printed a lot. Now the sledge comes back. We listen to the printer's kiss. A little smack when the ink comes off the paper. A very important sound, but this sound the printer knew if there was enough ink or not. So here we are. One page of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, as this text, in Latin. 
would make my design lead. So now imagine for printing one Bible that what I did there was necessary 1,282 times. Then it was just only printed. That took about two months to do it in that time, but that was already much, much faster than the two or three years for the handwritten one at the same time. That's the way to see it. So I put a special paper on it. <coughs> I roll it together. So and this is your payment for the work you did well now to do. Yeah. <laughs> Don't open it before tomorrow evening. It has to dry so long. Okay. If not, it smears the characters. Therefore, there's another paper to do. And if you have a long way to do with it, we have for 50 cents in the shop a little box. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you got a little impression of what printing was for 400 years. Around 1815, first rotation printing machines came up, only for newspaper printing first. These kind of machines, a few of them you see on the first floor in metal, and with larger pressing plates, but still with a handle that you had to pull on and place in the print shop till the 20th century. That's the way it started, 1450, here in Mainz, with Gutenberg. Thank, Thank you, sir. Good job. Thank you very much.